Well, I've, I'm in a log home here. And the reason why I got one is that I wanted to have that pyramid power because you don't want any metal. So my house is alive. It's just these thick, beefy logs. <laughs> you don't want metal? Not if you're going to have a pyramid, no, because okay. it'll absorb these unique fields. It's, the tr it's, it's one of the ways you could talk about is it's the transverse wave. There's this uh, natural energy that the pyramid is built to harness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, have you heard of um, like bio, bio, bio um, geometry and how there's sort of like a green, like with certain patterns, there'll be in materials, there's like a green, a negative green and a positive green. And one is kind of detrimental to your health and one is positive. I've done a lot of work on matter and what is matter. And it really does appear that our, our solution comes in sacred geometry. And that we're going to learn that uh, it's not really a particle as much as it's sort of like standing wave. And what that means is it's a wave that rotates it within itself and holds its position. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just standing there in space, but it's got motion inside of it. Mm -hmm. And so we're not, sacred geometry is, is such a huge subject. Uh, we can get into the fact that there was a professor, Henry Markram, who conducted the most advanced uh, analysis of the brain and concluded that the brain is processing thought in these three-dimensional patterns. The cubes, tetrahedrons, uh, octahedrons are the three that he specifically found in his paper. And so when we see that the, the mechanism of our consciousness, the actual mapping out of thought, creates these sacred geometric patterns, which are the same patterns that exist in matter, this explains why somebody like Padmasambhava was able to go around and push his hand into the rock. 